Hello dear students, I am Dr. Moinuddin. In this video we are going to discuss some MCQs on atomic emission spectroscopy. And this is the part one. You know in this current situation, in this current corona pandemic situation, MCQs are very important for you with respect to exam point of view. So you need to watch this video till the end so that you can achieve better goals. Before starting the video, if you didn't subscribe my channel yet, then subscribe it right now and also press the bell icon so you may get in touch with my upcoming videos. So here is the first question. Atomization is a process in which a sample is converted into let's see the options a is the liquid phase molecules b is the gas phase atoms c is the elementary ions while d is none of these so let's see what is the right answer so right answer is option b that is gas phase atoms so in atomization the sample is converted into gaseous atoms then question number two is flame atomization temperature in degree centigrade range is so what is the range of flame atomizers so let's see the options so a is 1700 to 3150 degree centigrade b is 6000 to 8000 degree centigrade C is 1200 to 3000 degree centigrade while D is 5000 to 10,000 degree centigrade so let's see what is the right option so right answer is A that is 1700 to 3150 degree centigrade means by using flame as an atomizer we can provide the heat uh, in what in the range 1700 to 3150 degree centigrade then question number three is direct current plasma is used in which type of spectroscopy so let's see the options a is the fluorescent spectroscopy b is emission spectroscopy c is absorption spectroscopy while d is mass spectrometry so let's see what is the right answer so right answer is b that is emission spectroscopy so direct current plasma is being used as an atomizer in emission spectroscopy then question number four in flame emission spectroscopy self-absorption is usually seen at solution concentrations between so self-absorption is the type of interference so at what concentration it is being observed so here are the options option a is between 200 microgram per ml to 300 microgram per ml option b is 100 to 200 microgram per ml c is 10 to 100 microgram per ml and D is none of these so let's see what is the right option so right answer is the option C and that is 10 to 100 microgram per ml so these are the concentration ranges in which self-absorption phenomena is being observed the next question is constituents that influence the volatilization of an analyte are so here are the options a solute volatilization interferences spectral interferences c is the physical interferences while d is blank interferences so let's see what is the right option so right answer is a that is salute salute volatilization interferences then question number six is what is correct about atomic emission spectroscopy so let's see the options a it is a measurement of intensity of emitted light at a particular wavelength 
from the atoms that are excited thermally. B. It is the measurement of absorbance of emitted light at a particular wavelength from the atoms that are excited thermally. Option number C. It is the measurement of intensity of emitted light at a particular wavelength from the atoms that are excited by monochromatic light. And option D. It is the measurement of intensity of absorbed light at a particular wavelength from the atoms that are excited thermally. So let's see what is the right option. So right answer is A that is atomic emission spectroscopy. It is actually the measurement of the intensity of emitted light at a particular wavelength from the atoms that are excited thermally. Then question number seven is flame emissions spectroscopy is still used in some clinical labor laboratories for determining. So let's see the options. Option A is carbon and silicon. B is gold and silver. C is sodium and potassium. While D is none of these. So let's see the right answer. So right answer is C that is sodium and potassium. So flame emission spectroscopy is generally being used for determination of sodium and potassium. Then question number eight is the major reason of non-linearity when resonance transitions are used is let's see the options A is self emission B is self absorption C is both A and B while D is fluorescence so let's see the right answer so right answer is B that is self absorption so it causes non-linearity in the results then question number nine is flame emission spectrum contain let's see the options a few emission lines b many emission lines c is the few absorption lines while d is many absorption lines so let's see the right option so right answer is a that is few emission lines so actually the flame spectra uh, flame emission spectra it's a very simple type of spectra having a few emission lines then question number 10 is which is not a characteristic of flame emission spectroscopy so let's see the options a it should provide sufficient energy for the sample to be atomized b the flame should be non-turbulent c the flame should not have minimum emission while d the flame should be able to operate at low gas velocities so let's see what is the right option that which is not the characteristic characteristic of flame emission spectroscopy so right answer is the C that is the flame should not have minimum emission then question number 11 atomic emission occurs when a valence electron moves from let's see the options a from high energy orbital to lower energy orbital b from lower energy orbital to higher energy orbital c electron does not move while d is none of above so right option is answer uh, option a and that is atomic emission occurs when electron moves from higher energy orbital that is excited state to the lower energy orbital that is the ground state question number 12 in inductively coupled plasma torch quartz tube contains let's see the options a is the nitrogen gas b is the neon gas c is the hydrogen gas while d is argon gas so let's see the right option so right answer is option d that is argon gas so actually argon gas flows through the 
uh, through the uh, quartz tube of ICP torch. Question number 13. In ICP torch, the total rate of argon consumption is, let's see the options, A is 30 to 50 liter per minute, B is 5 to 20 liter per minute, C is 1 to 3 liter per minute, while D is 40 to 45 liter per minute. So let's see what is the right answer. So right answer is B, that is 5 to 20 liter per minute. Question number 14 is, the removal of material from a surface by vaporization is called, let's see the options, A is excitation, B is ablation, C is solidification, while D is resonance. So let's see what is the right answer. So right answer is B, that is ablation. Question number 15. Types of detection instruments which are used for emission spectroscopy are A is the sequential, B is simultaneous multi-element analysis, C is Fourier transform, while D is all of these. So let's see what is the right option. So right answer is D that is all of these so all of these are being used in atomic emission spectroscopy question number 16 what are desirable properties of an emission spectrometer options are a rapid signal acquisition and recovery b is low stray light c is wide dynamic range usually greater than 10 raised 6 while d is all of above so let's see what is the right option so right answer is d that is all of above question number 17 what is inductively coupled plasma atomization temperature let's see the options a 6000 to 8000 degree centigrade B is 1000 to 3000 degree centigrade, C is 11 to 15000 degree centigrade, while D is 500 to 2000 degree centigrade. So let's see what is the right option. So right option is A, that is temperature provided by inductively coupled plasma ranges between 6000 to 8000 degree centigrade. Number 18. In atomic emission spectroscopy, the emission occur due to the electronic transition of, let's see the options, A. Singlet ground state to singlet excited state. B. Is the singlet excited state to singlet ground state. C. Is the singlet ground state to triplet excited state. Well, D is the triplet excited state to singlet ground state. So let's see what is the right option. So right answer is option B. That is, emission occur due to electronic transition when it occur from singlet excited state to singlet ground state. Number 19. Which one is the most appropriate function of flame? Let's see the options. A. Excitation and ionization. B. Ionization and vaporization. C. Is nebulization. While D. Is none of these. So let's see the right answer. So right answer is option A. That is excitation and ionization. Number 20. Which of the following is an example of anionic interference in atomic emission spectroscopy? So A is interference by high concentration of sodium ions in calcium ions. B 
is interference by formation of less volatile salt with sulfates by calcium c is increased viscosity of the analyte solution by sugars while d is decreased drop size of the analyte solution by alcohols so let's see the right answer so right answer is the option b that is interference by formation of less volatile salt with sulfates by calcium number 21 in atomic emission spectroscopy the graph is drawn between a is emission versus concentration b is absorbance versus concentration c is absorbance versus wavelength while d is emission versus wavelength so let's see the right answer so graph is plotted actually between emission versus wavelength so d is the right answer here question number 22 which of the following is not a component of the emission system in flame photometer let's see the options a is the burner b is atmoiser c is fuel gases and their regulation while d is chopper so let's see what is the right option so right answer is d that is chopper so chopper actually it is not the part of a flame photometer number 23 releasing agents are used in atomic emission spectroscopy to prevent let's see the options a is cationic interference b is anionic interferences c is both anionic and cationic interferences while d is physical interferences so let's see what is the right answer so right answer is b that is anionic interferences number 24 the lines which are present in atomic emission spectrum are a brown b is dark c bright lines while d the translucent lines so let's see what is the right option so in atomic emission spectrum we get bright lines so c is the right answer and then question number 25 is the background in atomic emission spectrum is let's see the options a so there are blue spaces b the background is pink c it is light background while d the background is dark so let's see the right option so right answer is d that is the background in atomic emission spectrum is dark so dear students this was all about current video but still there are a large number of videos in the pipeline so to get them in touch with all of those videos you need to subscribe my channel so thanks for watching thank you very much